was with the Eagles. They picked them up last week, and here he cost them possession. That wasn't bad. I mean, it was just one of those things that you always talk about going to a point five yards in front of the punter, not going to the punter. McDougal was two or three yards in front of the punter. He was a little tight. But that was a that was a big break there for the Redskins because like I said, it's not only a 15 yard penalty but it's an automatic first down and maybe for the first time here it gives them pretty good field position and that's the skins first first down of the game the game in which the Giants have gained 124 yards and Washington has gained three from the 37 yard line Portis slips but slithers to the outside and then pays the price up at the 41 yard line. John talking about Clinton Portis being such a big factor. He led the league in carries last year, and he's going to take himself out of the game here for at least to play. But he had a big night here last December, but he might have gotten poked in the eye. And Clinton Portis is a is a real tough guy. I mean, and I think that that if the Redskins early in the season are, are going to have much success offensively, I think he has to be a big part of it. And you know the Redskins are using the same Joe Gibbs running game. Here's Liddell Betts who was his backup. That's round choice in 0-2 out of the University of Iowa. Kiwanuka making the tackle. Kiwanuka going from linebacker back to end when Umanura was out for the season. You know, and he feels pretty comfortable in doing that too. I mean, he's just he's just reading the line. You know, the line's coming down. You know, the cut, he just goes right down with that offensive line, and it brings him right into the running back. I think Kiwanuka playing that right end is not going to be a problem for the Giants, and I think Justin Tuck, obviously playing the left end, will not be a problem either. Third down and seven now. Campbell. Was under pressure again that time. Aaron Wash, the corner, came in, forced the issue. And apart from that penalty, the Redskins still don't have a first down. Campbell, the start of the night, 0 for his first three. Manning, 5 for 10 for 76. Remember how they used to last year? They would they would move Justin Tuck around, and you thought maybe he's playing left end now. They're not going to do it. Well, they can still do it. They put someone else at left end, McDougal at left end, and then let him play like Tuck played last year. Brooks already with his third punt, a short punt, and it's fair caught at the 31-yard line by McWhorters, and we go to Andrea. Well, guys, you were talking about Steve Spagnolo. Now, he spent tw almost 24 hours interviewing for the Redskin job at the home of owner uh, Dan Snyder, along with Vinny Serrato, the vice president. Now, Spagnolo told me he was flattered and overwhelmed by it, but that it was a gut decision that he pulled his name out of consideration. However, Serrato told me not only did they never offer Spagnolo the job, he said that when they reviewed the candidates, they felt that he was not the right person and that they did not have the comfort level with Spagnolo. Well, you never know when something is revisionist history or not. But we'll just take that at face value. From the 32 yard line, first down. Off the play fake, the pass is incomplete. One thing that we do know is that when they interviewed Spagnolo, Jim Zorn had already gone to Washington. They, they hired Zorn as the offensive coordinator. So no matter who the head coach was going to be, Zorn was going to be the offensive coordinator. For a while, it looked like it would be Jim Fossil. Steve Mariucci, I guess, was in the mix for a while. A couple of other guys were in the mix. We talked about Spagnolo, And then finally, in early February, they interviewed Zorn for the head coaching job. So he got the, the big raise and the big promotion to offensive coordinator. And then he's the, the big guy. Right, and I think they not only had the offensive coordinator hired, but I think they had Greg Walsh, the defensive coordinator hired. This is Derek Ward up to the 42 yard line and that will take us to the end of the first quarter a most productive one for the Super Bowl chance the Giants lead the Redskins by a score of 10 to nothing and NBC's NFL kickoff special will continue right after these messages. Interconference matchup. The Sunshine State goes to battle in Gainesville as the Hurricanes and the Gators renew an old rivalry. Live college football, Miami versus Florida, this Saturday, only on NASN. 
These guys look fantastic. I'm so proud. Join the Reebok Hockey Revolution. Visit NASN.com, your home for North American sports merchandise. Look at Penny Gold in that light blue plymouth. Yeah. That's your biggest victory? This is it. Penny touched down with a beautiful handling car. I ran the same speed all day long. He's going to win the race. He's going to win it spinning. If you can beat Richard, you can win the race. Penny is out in front at the line. Penny wins it. Hey, I lost some this close, but this is the first time I remember in a long time I won one this close. They're not changing tires. They're only adding gasoline and heat. What strategy? Richard Petty has won the 200th race. I understand that no one has ever done that. Who's the greatest of them all? Well, you know, it just points to Richard Petty. Monday Night Football is back on NASN with a live doubleheader. First up, an NFC matchup as the Vikings square off against the Packers at Lambeau Field. Then longtime rivals hit the gridiron as the Broncos take on the Raiders. Coverage starts with ESPN's Monday Night Countdown. Live NFL, only on NASN. Was so instrumental in so many ways in the history of the National Football League as the Raiders guard for 15 seasons to the Hall of Fame he went and then to run the NFL Players Association his widow Terry and his three sons here before the game and Terry tossing the coin to start the 2008 season throughout the course of the season the players are going to wear patches there it is GU 63 and for the opening weekend games we have the logo the emblem is on the field and John you were down in in Washington last week and were very instrumental in in the service it must have been uh, quite something. Yeah it, uh, it was I mean I was so close to Gene over the years we both started the same year with the Oakland Raiders in 1967 so we were together directly and indirectly for 41 years and you know, he gave I mean I mean he gave himself to to pro football I mean that's you know as a player I mean he was a great player he was a Hall of Famer and then he went on for 25 years to, to lead the union and you think of what the players were when he started 25 years ago and mm -hmm. what they were making and where they are today and what they're making and Gene Upshaw was maybe the largest contributor to pro football ever. You know I'm not going to dispute that I just think that you know we talked about this last week the thing I loved about him you asked him a question you got a direct answer yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't work the edges yeah. he went right up the middle right. and it may not always be the answer you want on second down and 10 after the pass for Toomer was incomplete on second down they give the ball to Derek Ward in his fifth year former Jet who came came into his own last year and then he got hurt but he was part of that committee that was so successful in getting the Giants to the playoffs and then he was hurt at the end. And, and now look at the committee they have I mean they start Brandon Jacobs who can run over anything and then they can bring Derek Ward and they still have a Mott Bradshaw as a change of pace so just in their running game alone they could throw so many things at you but again I go back it all starts with this group right here that offensive line that I think is one of the best in football third and seven and that line does its job long enough for Manning to get the pass off and it's caught by Samaris Moss who gets taken down at the 33 yard line so Moss for a 23 yard gain he would be their number four wide receiver his first catch of the season. You know, if I were an offensive lineman though I would want to protect for Eli Manning because I know he's going to hang in there and someone may get off my block just like they did on David Deal that time but he's going to hang in there and still make that throw. Samaris Moss does a good job of selling that he's going to go deep before he breaks the arrow. On the first down, now they give the ball to Ward. I don't know what the odds were on the proposition, but Sonoris is Santana's brother, younger brother. Santana, the number one receiver for the Washington Redskins, and you would have thought that Santana would have caught a pass this season before Sonoris. Uh uh. There is Santana Moss. And we were talking about the depth that they. That they have a running back to Giants, but also a wide receiver. When you look at 
Burris, and then they got Dominic uh, Hickson and Monty Toomer, Steve Smith, and Oris Moss. I mean, they can bring a lot of guys at you, and they are doing it in this first half. Now, I didn't even mention the Super Bowl hero, David Tyree, who had knee surgery in the offseason. They do hope to have him back before the season ends, and Manning's going to have to call the Giants' second time out of the half. When we come back, it'll be second down at six. Chinch up 10 nothing. Coverage including the playoffs and the 2008 World Series. Major League Baseball only on NASN. Happy ja. Birthday to you, Happy Birthday to you, Happy Birthday Franz Beckenbauer, Happy Birthday to you. So what would you most like for your birthday? Well, it would be nice to uh, turn the lights off and bring in a cake, but uh, seriously, uh, if ESPN Classic were to play uh, all the games in my whole career, which were the best ones, uh, that would make me very happy. <laughs> and so we make his day with an evening dedicated to the Kaiser at his very best. Happy birthday, Beckenbauer. The 11th of September on ESPN Classic. Anning almost in the grasp. Mike Carey almost blew the whistle. Back to throw. Pins it against his helmet. Falls down. On top of Rodney Harrison, that sets up the Burris catch. It will live forever. Second down and six now with the ball of the 28 yard line. Manning, a ton of time. That line does a great job, and the catch is made at the 11 yard line. Burris juggled it for the moment, but was able to hold on. So Burris off to a big start tonight. Burris has now caught five passes for 84 yards. It's good for 16. Yeah, now this is a great job of pass protection here. I mean, they they, they keep everyone off. They they form a good pocket for Eli so that he can see, he can look up, and you can throw that into Plexigo Burris. That was a cover two, two deep safety. And I think if they had a single deep, I think they would have tried to get Plexigo deep. If they have too deep, they try and get them on that deep end that they just did. But again, on either play, they have to have that type of protection. That was a perfect pack. A per perfect pocket. Reed Dowdy was the cover man, and that one was caught at the seven yard line by Amani Toomer, the all time leading receiver for the Giants, who gets tackled by Carlos Rogers. So eight passes have been completed by Manning tonight five to Burris, and one each to Moss Smith, and now Toomer. And we were talking you know, earlier how you know he has so much confidence that Eli does now and then I think after being a confident quarterback you take that next step up to being comfortable in your confidence and I think that's where he is right now. Two tight two wide. Both like winding down on second and five. And Manning throws into traffic, and that was almost intercepted. Intended for Toomer, too far in front of him, and Fred Smoot almost had the pick. Yeah, and Eli Manning was telling him, keep going, keep going. He expected him to keep coming across. And Toomer, when he saw that he had inside coverage there, he kind of stopped and slowed up. And what Eli wanted him to do, when that guy sits inside you, just cut it off and run right across his face. Maybe you do need six preseason games. So they got away with one. <laughs> I don't think the tumor needs six preseason games. Third down and five. From the seven yard line. From the gun. 
Taking too much time. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty. It's third down. Yeah, I think that was one of the things last year. You know, after you know midseason towards the end that Tom Coughlin was really working with Eli on is is to eliminate turnovers. You know that the, you know throw the ball away, throw it out of bounds. You know I've gotten this third down situation here. Okay, you have the field goal now. You know, try and get that touchdown, but if it's not there, throw it away. Don't force don't anything up. once you get in the red zone. Don't force anything anytime. A third and nine. And Manning's going to throw it at the feet of Ward. So this bogs down the Giants after that opening drive went for the touchdown. And see their two subsequent drives bogged down. They got a field goal off the last one, and we'll have to settle for a shot at one here. You know, watch Jason Taylor here. He feels it's a screen. And when, when he sees Derek Ward go to the outside, he stops his rush, turns, and goes towards Derek Rowe, uh, uh, Ward. He was the guy that fouled up that play. Carney at 44 again. Fiegel is the holder, and the punter is 42. Warp lives. Meanwhile, Rich Seibert goes off the field with a little bit of assistance. Slowly, there he is. Left guard, Carney now. Ready to attempt a 30 yarder to make it a 13 Oops. to nothing game, and all of a sudden, another penalty. I would say that was on the Redskins, I and mean, it looked like they had about five of the guys in the middle move. Ed Hockley working out year round as always. Eddie Guns. Encroachment, defense, nose guard. Five yard penalty. It's still fourth down. It was a nose guard and about four of his buddies, I think. Looked like an avalanche in the middle <laughs> of that play. But it was a field goal situation uh, before the penalty, and it's still a field goal situation. Now a 25 yard attempt with the ball spotted at the 15 yard line. Landing and Moss going over things. Carney. 21st year in the league. Started with San Diego, then to New Orleans, Jacksonville, and KC last year, and the kick is good. 10:59 to play in the opening half on opening night. As you look at the Statue of Liberty, the Giants lead the Redskins 13 to nothing. The NFL is back, and NASN brings you a live doubleheader. The Brett Favre era begins for New York as the Jets take on the Dolphins. Then the Cowboys step into the dog pound to battle the Cleveland Browns. Coverage begins with ESPN Sunday NFL Countdown. This Sunday only on NASN. Let's take it to him. One play at a time. Yeah. One play at a time. Yeah. Don't get ahead of yourself. We hungry, baby. No, no, no. That is the way to stomp your way into the playoffs. Yeah. Reception number 23, an NFL record. Head coaches, Bart Starr, who was at Green Bay for several seasons, and Jim Zorn each threw 3,149 passes, the most NFL passes by players who became head coaches. So you, you go back through the years, and you know, you had. People like Norm Van Brockman and Bob Waterfield, but Starr and Zorn are atop that list. And Jim tonight, with his team down 13 to nothing, is still looking for his first offensive first down. They have one first down on the penalty, 
The kickoff is taken by Rock Cartwright at the one yard line. And Cartwright will give them decent position, bringing it back up to the Redskin 36 yard line where he's tackled by Michael Johnson. You know, here comes Campbell, John, and when you you look at Campbell and they're going to go to the West Coast offense, but tonight they're leaving the extra back in. It's almost as if they go back to Gibbs' style of putting the extra blockers in against the Giants' attack. Yeah, I think they kind of had to because they know that the Giants are going to blitz, so they're they're getting ready for the blitz. But they just have to get a better pace. They have to get in the rhythm. They have to get something going so they can build off that because the Giants are just going to keep pressure. Them. Campbell looking to complete his first pass and he does but there's a penalty so we'll wait to see if this one holds and this is Chris Cooley who had a Pro Bowl year last season the tight end gets it to the 46 yard line but the Giants are all signaling that the penalty will be against Washington and all of the body language indicates that that's the case and we talk about the, the Giants and their defense and the pressure and as Steve Spagnuolo said if it works I just keep doing it and you can see that it has worked and he's just keeping doing it. There were fouls by both teams on the play. Number 60 offense and eligible downfield was also holding defense number 97. The penalty's offset. Replay first down. That's Chris Samuels and Matthias Kiwanuka who are lining up facing each other. Yeah, Kiwanuka was holding number 47, Chris Cooley. Yep, right there. Yep. And he grabbed him by the back, threw him down. And then that's also the thing that got Cooley open though on that play. And then because the the play got out of rhythm, Chris Samuels thought it should have been off, and he went downfield. The human you are gone for the season, broken leg. Kiwanuka, as we stated before, back along the line. Now Portis puts his head down. He got poked in the eye earlier, but comes back in for this series. Up to the 40. You know, John, with, with Jim Zorn coming in and the West Coast offense, and it's all about timing and rhythm. And all of that for Jason Campbell, another new system for him. The irony is, when you remember Jim Zorn as a player, he was a lot like Fran Tarkenton. He was the guy who loved to get out of the pocket and improvise. Right, and he, he was a pain to play against because, you know, you some quarterbacks you want to keep them on a spot like Jason Campbell. Jim Zorn, you didn't want to get him off the spot. But he was probably. Now Portis, and he'll be about a yard and a half short of the first down as Ross comes up. And Clark as well, and that's going to set up third down and one. You know, we were talking about how comfortable Eli Manning is, and I think that Jason Campbell is equally uncomfortable. You know, that in his last eight years, college and pro, he's had seven different offensive coordinators, seven different systems, and seven different techniques. I mean, everyone wants him to do it a different way. And he has no comfort out there at all. Ran a version of the West Coast at Auburn his senior year, and the Tigers were undefeated. And now on third and short, they give it to Portis, and he gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage. So on third and short, they run a very vanilla play, and it has no flavor. Okay, here's the here's the middle. This is where it all starts. Robbins Cofield in the middle Kiwanuka coming down from the outside but it all starts in the middle you see there's no movement at all in the middle and because that middle held the point then that outside Matthias Kiwanuka can get down to make that play Brooks making his NFL debut already his fourth punt in the first 22 minutes of the game and the quarters makes the fair catch at the 14 yard line. Manning in the giant offense back to work on opening night at the Meadowlands 13 to nothing New York. College football is back on NASN and we've got a live interconference matchup. The Sunshine State goes to battle in Gainesville as the Hurricanes and the Gators renew an old rivalry. Live college football, Miami versus Florida, this Saturday, only on NASN. I gave it to you. 
to him. Rose, I gave it to him, man. Big win. We're moving on. We are not finished. We are not finished, fellas. That's three in the first quarter. How much celebrating y'all want me to do? Come on! I ain't gonna need this hat where we going. That's how you finish! September on NASN. The Warriors of the NFL return to kick off another regular season. He is in for the touchdown. MLB's best begin the hunt for October and a place in the postseason. And the college football season is up and running, including Ohio State versus USC in one of the sport's best non-conference matchups. What a catch. September on NASN. And then a lot of the rest of the league opens up on Sunday, our Sunday night football opener. Chicago going to Indianapolis. There's the gang, Bob and the boys. Coverage of football night in America starting at 7 Eastern time in the game at 8.15. From the 14-yard line, here come the Giants now, starting this drive with a Brandon Jacobs run over right tackle, London Fletcher. In on the stop again. The Mannings are there, Archie and Olivia, and uh, you know, <laughs> have two sons, each hoisting a Lombardi Trophy within 365 days, or roughly thereof, of each other is off the charts, off the board. Well, and you can just tell by meeting Peyton and, and a Eli that they're they're two great parents, and and I know them both, and I know that they are. And I know that Second and five. Here comes Jacobs again to the right side, and he does get taken down here by Jason Taylor. Nice stop there by Taylor. And there, there are the boys, the Mannings, going all the way back to uh, their youth in New Orleans. They did meet here at the Meadowlands on opening night of the 2006 season, and last year on the left, and the year before that on the right. Not a lot of families have that picture, do they? No, no, I don't think so. And they both have the same look, the same angle, and uh, I don't know. Those those were two special moments. Third and three. Seven minutes to play in the opening half. And Manning will convert, and the catch is made by Amani Toomer. The second catch of the game, Amani Toomer in his 13th year out of Michigan. He was drafted with the Giants number two in 1996. See, the Redskins are trying to put the same pressure on the Giants, and they're bringing blitz and putting it, but the difference is Eli Manning is quicker. He's quicker with the ball, he's quicker with his release. He gets back, gets it out of there for the first down. Jacobs was at Auburn for a little while. He wound up going to Southern Illinois, started at Coffeyville, Kansas. He actually played on the same team with, with Jason Campbell for a year. We were talking to Campbell about him the other night. Campbell said, you know, the problem was we had so many good backs down there. They started talking about making him a linebacker and a safety, and he said, I'm out of here. That's when he got out. He said he went to linebacker, to safety, then to tight end. He said, no, I'm a running back, and I'm going to be a running back, and I'm not going to stay here. They run around Cornell Williams. They had a lot of great backs at that time. And the Southern Illinois went, drafted in the fourth round in 04. Second down and seven. Here he goes to the left side. Matt turns the corner. Off he goes. Past midfield. That was Madison Hedgecock, the fullback, number 39, one of the best blocking fullbacks in the league. Michael Strahan can appreciate that one. It's a 24 yard gain for a first. Yeah, here's Hedgecock uh, making the lead and the block right there. And that's the one that springs Brandon Jacobs. This time, Leron Landry gets over. Look at the difference between this tackle of Leron Landry. He is not going to tackle this guy high again. And he'll get spun down by 
Smoot with 440 to go in the half. You know, we were talking earlier about Greg Blosh telling his defensive backs hit him low. If you don't, if you get him where you hit him above his waist, that's what's going to happen. So you see that power, and he just runs straight up. And if you are going to tackle him, you have to tackle him below his waist and maybe even below his knees. Eric Ward now, and he will work his way. Keeps those legs turning for a first down. Again, behind Hedgecock. So part of that committee, and we haven't, we've yet to see Ahmad Bradshaw, who's the other guy, and you know he can run. He, had an 88 yarder against Buffalo last year, a key play in that game. Yeah, we always talk about an offensive line working as a unit. Just from that shot there, you could just see this offensive line. They all get off together, they all get that push up the field, get the lead block there, the back right in behind them. This is an excellent, you know, I keep saying this, but this is an excellent run block offensive line. Burris again, big half for him. Smooth, who's playing a little bit more than he normally would. He would come in in the next one and dime, but with Sean Springs hurt, he's seeing a lot of action. And Burris is having a field day with him right now. That's seven catches for 98 yards. Yeah, Greg Bloss, the defensive coordinator of the Redskins, is trying everything. I mean, he's, you know, tried to zone him, tried to man him, trying to blitz him. He just can't get there. And even when he does have a free rusher, Eli Manning hangs in there and throws the ball for completion. Second and two from the 26 yard line. Fake draw. Manning throws, and that's almost picked. And that's exactly what Washington would need at this point. Because they're getting eaten up. It's Carlos Rogers with the coverage on the play. Total yardage in this game right now. The Giants have 246 total yards, and we're not even at the half. The Redskins have 16. And the Redskins haven't completed a pass. No, and part of that is the Redskins remember their last two preseason games. They didn't look good at all and and they couldn't do anything. They just carried over into the night's game. But another part of it and a pretty big part of it is that giant defense. The Redskins are outscored 71 to 6 in their last two preseason games. And this is Jacobs now on the third down play who gets bottled up. So again, the Giants with some good drives. The first one paid off with a touchdown, but now they're going to have to settle for a third field goal attempt. I think when you get them going, you want to you want to keep them going. Maybe they got a little conservative there. Yep. Yeah, because I mean Eli's throwing it. He's confident, and you know Plexico Burris can look like he can get open anytime he wants to. And you know I don't know that you have to do those kinds of plays, but. You know, again, you get the lead, and it's a regular season game. You're ahead 13 to nothing. You get down closer. You just don't want to do anything stupid, man. 48-yard attempt coming up for Carney. <laughs> Carney, you know, it's like a golfer who shoots his age. He outkicked his age right there. 44 years old, 48-yard field goal, two-minute warning, 16 nothing. Hit the gridiron as the Broncos take on the Raiders. Coverage starts with ESPN's Monday Night Countdown. Live NFL, only on NASN. The place is absolutely packed. People are waving. You couldn't be in a better place on earth. The crowd on its feet as one. The green flag is underway. Bottom line remains, somebody's got a chance to kiss those bricks. Jimmy Johnson's pick crew moved him up two spots. We've been talking a lot about Jimmy Johnson being strong. He's got a chance to show it. Carl Edwards is charging, but Johnson is still in charge. Everybody in turn three on their feet. Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards, mano a mano. Jimmy Johnson will capture his second All-State 400 at the Brickyard. The best.
best Major League Baseball coverage all the way to the World Series on NASN. Bob and Chris first half analysis week one preview Brian Williams will have a report from St. Paul the final night of the Republican National Convention so that's what's coming up on your Toyota halftime show 16 to nothing Giants they give Carney officially a 47 yard field goal still out of kick his age He's rock part right from the five yard line breaks a tackle at the 20 and Cartwright into giant territory takes it all the way down to the 45 yard line where Kevin Dockery finally catches up with him. So Washington needing a spark and getting one on the run back. This kickoff special is being brought to you by Lincoln introducing the all new 2009 Lincoln MKS Lincoln retired by Subway restaurant Subway eat fresh by Frost Brewed Coors Light the world's most refreshing beer and by Verizon Wireless. That was a 50 yard kickoff return for Rock Cartwright. The ball at the 45. Campbell still hasn't completed a pass. This time he gives it on a delay to Portis and that's a nine yard gain where he's tackled by the corner Aaron Ross. I think this is a big drive here for the Redskins and you know down. Uh, 16 nothing if they could just get something going you know just get something on the board even if it's just a field goal at least they have you know, something to build on going in at halftime. Campbell is 0 for 3. Portis has carried the ball eight times for 33 yards. That was their longest play of the night. A nine yard rush. Second and one. Campbell to the outside finally completes a pass to Antoine Randall L. So it took them. 28 minutes and 50 seconds and you saw Campbell say let's huddle up here. Well you know that if he can get time and the, the Giants bringing so much pressure that they have to be man to man in their pass coverage. So all you have to do is get the blitz picked up and then what you have to do is get your receivers to get open and get some separation and then you can make throws like that because he did have the protection and he did have that man cover. At the 23 yard line first down. Slot Moss outside. Portis is the running back. Flag is thrown. Portis is smart on that. You know, we always think that if a flag is thrown and it's going to be a, a free play, you always think of a pass, but it you know that free play can be a run too, and you can you know everyone stops and you just keep going. Ed Hawk, please. There were two fouls by the defense. Offense. That, uh, correct. I'm sorry. And he's a lawyer. Outside defense. <laughs> that penalty is declined. There's also personal foul face mask. That penalty is enforced half the distance to the goal. First down. Objection overruled. Well, this is what the Redskins needed. I mean, they needed a you know a play. They got it in their special teams and the kickoff return, and then they get protection, and get a pass completion, get a penalty here, get good field position, you know, and and get something going, get some momentum going in to the halftime. There is no such thing anymore as a five-yard face mask. Well, they didn't even get the face mask. It's a 15 or nothing. There's no such thing as what we used to call the garden variety face mask. That wasn't even the garden variety. No, that was a nothing that they cost him 15. So it's first and 10 from just inside the 11 yard line. And the Giants moving around on defense, but it doesn't hurt them. There's a lot of action going on on the other side of the line as Fred Robbins gets there first. Washington has all of its timeouts. You, know, you always hear about the defensive ends in this in this defense, but but that Fred Robbins in the middle is a pretty good player. I mean, he he holds the point when you try and run at him. He'll get penetration, and every once in a while he'll get a big pass rush right up the middle. They're taking a lot of time in a situation where you have 
three timeouts. Down to 26 seconds on the snap on second and 11. Campbell's going to throw. It's going to be tipped and it's incomplete and it's out of bounds. But in this situation, you don't want to get into a, a, a into a into a situation where you're going to leave timeouts on the board when you've got three of them. Right, and there's no reason to have to rush a play when you have three timeouts. I mean, they they should have used one there, gathered themselves, and got the play. They were trying to hurry up too much, but you don't have to do that when you have three timeouts. Well, they were hurrying up, but it still took them about 25 seconds to run that play. So now they're down to a third and 11. And they have more timeouts than they'll ever need here. Campbell. Wide open. Throwing wide open is Moss. And Santana Moss has gotten Washington back into the ballgame. That Rock Cartwright 50 yard return, the penalty, and then all of a sudden the Giants completely dominant. But a point away now from a nine point margin right there's Santana Moss he started out on the left side came all the way across and again that time Jason Campbell had good protection so he could wait for Moss to work his way across the field start on the left side complete the pass on the right side 45 yards six plays Sweezing for the point after Brooks is the new holder since he won the job from Frost and the kick is good. So a near perfect first half by the Giants, and all of a sudden it's a nine-point game. 16 to 7 with 13 ticks left in the half. ESPN 360. Whenever you're online, you're at the game.